here's my very basic framework, right? Um, risk comes because a naturally or otherwise occurring single point of failure or single point of control um, goes wrong, right? So let, let's say we all depend on the Earth, right? Our, the Earth is our single point of failure. If something, if an asteroid like big enough hits the Earth, we're gone because the Earth is a single point of failure. What is a good way to deal with that? Well, you know, you might or might not agree with Elon. I know you're, you've got your, your doubts, but making life multiplanetary is kind of that. Well, then we've got the solar system, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. But, you know, for, for that limited qu- question of like, what makes the Earth robust? Uh, you know, what, what, what makes us, uh, you know, the Earth a single point of failure? You can sort of reason about that, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Hold so- on, hold on. Point of order. It's very important to me, uh, especially since Elon might see this, that he understand. I am not arguing it is not a very good idea to make humans multiplanetary. My concern is that that is not a near enough term solution, that the biology on Mars or anywhere else is a tricky enough problem that this does not deal with our immediate crisis, right? Um, You know, in other words, it's like we've got a house fire and the proposal is, well, what we need is a house built out of different materials. And it's like, okay, but no, we've got a house fire. There are people in that building, it's burning. And it's like, yeah, but if that building was made out of concrete, you know, and it's like, I don't want to talk about building materials now. I want to talk about the house fire, right? Right. So anyway, my objection is not to being multi sure. no, I, 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 I know it's it's nuanced, and yeah, I didn't mean to imply that you are. Yeah, yeah, of, no, it wasn't you. I just want it. I just want it clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so so then you know that's basically the same pattern as you say if you say like, well, you know, if you uh, put I don't know a single you know institute of health of some nation in charge of you know by extension the whole world's uh, response to COVID. Even if they were staffed by the best people, any mistake they make is going to go very far. It's the same problem with monocultures, right? Uh, you know, one virus gets in, it gets in everywhere, right? All, you know, all of these are the same thing. Existential, risk, existential risks exist because as a civilization, we have not weeded out, you know, as you know, all, all of the single points of uh, control, a uh, failure, uh, some of which are single points of control that we have created. Right, so governments we have created right to solve certain problems, but they themselves are um, juicy targets. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, so, in, in in that scope, right, my thought and, and sort of where I'm aghast at my fellow rationalists, it's like if you are discussing how to reduce existential risk, um, you, can't, you couldn't possibly be suggesting that we add. A single point of failure to the mix, right? We, we, especially when you're talking about an intelligent agent that can do what all the other intelligent agents are doing and try to capture that thing, right? Let's say we made a world AI organization, a WIO, um, you know, in the spirit of the WTO and WHO, right? Um, do you think maybe that there is enough literature on regulatory capture that an AI that just woke up would be like, oh, I know what to do? you know, let's get an island somewhere (laughs) on some planes. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like, you don't need to go to, you know, advanced biology to, to, to figure that one out. So. So let's, 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 uh, let's make that perfectly clear. Right. First of all, if Yudkowsky himself is famous for pointing out the high likelihood that an AGI could talk its way out of a safety protocol, a box that it was designed to contain it, right? Yep. So you're talking about a single point of failure that an AGI would then have as a target, and were it to capture that thing, it would have de facto control over the board, right? Over... over any competition that might arise because the function of that uh, international energy, uh, uh, atomic energy uh, commission, whatever the I- I- agency that Sam Altman proposed, for instance, um, is to keep AIs below a certain capability. <laughs> so all you right. have to do is capture it and make it effective. Uh, so right. long as it doesn't catch you. Like, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't. <laughs> it's, it's exactly what, In a business context, this would be obvious, right? You want to hobble all of the competitors in their crib, right? That's that's the game. And 
the idea that you're going to build the mechanism whereby an AGI could do that to its would-be AGI competitors is foolhardy. Now, I'm troubled by the fact that we find ourselves staring down the barrel of the AGI era and that we are now playing catch up. The horses are out of the barn. What are we supposed to do about it? And the answer is, um, I understand this isn't the time to figure out what dumb fuck let the horses out of the barn, but wow, was that a big error, right? Now, I'm not sure what to do about it. I don't know what the non-authoritarian uh, response is that might have contained the uh, the uh, developing technology that will produce AGI. But nonetheless, we are left playing a very difficult game. This thing now uh, available in public and uh, the keys to how to produce it more or less uh, distributed about. I know there are details which are not, but um, but anyway, that's a, that's a difficult puzzle to solve. On the other hand, watching, again, the folks who fucked up COVID so badly arguing for the absolutely most draconian reorganization imaginable, basically handing over power to people who think that they've gamed this through thoroughly, have done some obviously broken math to produce a level of certainty that would, if they're effectively like creating the inverse of Pascal's wager in order to require us to engage in a behavior that they think is the right one. But it's like, you'd have to be mad not to do what they think. And the answer is no, actually, I just disagree with your calculus. I'm not mad. Here's the thing, right? Yes. I think here's something very interesting I learned over the last couple of days. Most people in that community do not actually agree with Yukowski on the, his estimate. So his estimate, as articulated, I believe in the Bankless podcast, though it might have been in, in one of the other ones he appeared at the same, in the same period. He said he's 99.5% and maybe a little bit more sure that we're we're doomed. Right. And doom is a word that's used sort of as a term of art, as in we either go extinct or we um, get kept in a zoo that we can't get out of. Or like, you know, all sorts of bad, you know, things that I don't want to get further down that tree. It's not, yeah, the sort of thing that people want to talk about. But, um, you know, we're, we're doomed. Like, it's, it's a bad outcome. Like, we, we're, we're, you know, the, the possibility of, you know, occupying universe, let's, let's call it, is, is permanently gone. Um, and, and probably a lot worse than that. So um, the, the the problem with that is that if I prov- if you believe that we are 99.5 percent doomed, if I offer you a ninety nine percent doomed scenario, you would take it. It is an upgrade. Yep. Right, and that is really bad. <laughs> so I want to call out to the rationalists who think it's you know it's thirty percent likely, twenty percent likely. You know, I even quibble with the idea of putting percentages on these things, but whatever. Like, let's just go with it. Um, even if if you think that, like, please understand, you you think Eliezer Yukowski is mostly wrong, and he would if he would take a thirty percent risk when you think the current risk is twenty, he is advocating for making your situation worse, right? It's this is not a situation where it's like, well, you know, he's making people aware of AI risk. There's that's not that kind of timeline. Um, yes, people are going to be aware of AI risk. Trust me. Um, the, the, the point is to have a realistic understanding of that risk so that we don't overreact and make things worse as we have in similar situations. In fact, let's get to that about uh, the rationalists and COVID because I think if they hear you say they messed up COVID, I know what they'll, they'll say. And I think I, I want to bring that up, handle it, and bring us back here, which is to say um, rationalists think they did excellent during COVID because they um, picked up the signal early which is true, right? By February uh, and March, rationalists were all out buying masks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, much earlier than most people taking it seriously. Great. Um, th- you know. However, from that sort of triumph, um, the next thing they did is they gave themselves to a, a modeling exercises, basically, right? Um, a lot of rationalist or rational adjacent money went to the Imperial College for these uh, sort of sim- simulations they were doing and these models, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and a lot of that was sort of built on that. And you know what? A pandemic is actually, you know, after we deal with the original 
horrible mistakes is pretty good for a thing you model. Like, honestly, if you're going to model something, you know, how a virus spreads in a population is a pretty well understood problem. And we still did it pretty, <laughs> pretty poorly. Um, but that actually fee- fed into this um, mindset that you can just go off in your sort of crib um, on a notebook or on a computer and like put some numbers down and know what's going to happen. And first of all, that was wrong with COVID uh, for reasons we can get into. Um, But secondly, uh, you know, right now they have the mindset that they've basically discovered psychohistory, right? They kind of know the broad patterns of history and how it's all going to end and what we should all do. And we should just shut up and listen. And like, it is built on like layers and layers and layers of bad assumptions. Um, reality is complicated. Complex systems are complex. Um, you know, just because you you know what's I don't know what to eat to not starve does not mean <laughs> you can model uh, novel technology with superior intelligence uh, five times down the road, or what regulatory authorities are going to do if you bring them into a conversation they fundamentally do not understand. You you get at best AIs are Kamala. Um, and yeah. then it gets worse. You you get that. I mean, yeah. For one thing, there's no way that given the level of capture, you don't get somebody who thinks, oh, with this level of control, I can make a mint, right? It's it's not even. I mean, it's not even worth it. I don't know. The ring of power shows up. What do we do? Oh, I don't. I don't know. Get Sauron involved. Right. So I want to come back to a couple things. One, you said that Yudkowsky is 99% sure we're doomed, which is very different than there is a 99% chance that we are doomed. It's subtle. But let's say that you are being sucked over a waterfall, right? You're you're in a canoe and you're being sucked over a waterfall and you're paddling as hard as you can. There's a point at which there's no amount of force you could generate that's going to prevent you from going over the falls, right? So that's 100% you're going over the falls, and you might be 99% sure that you're past that point. Sounds like that's where Yudkowsky has us. That's very different than, you know, 99% of the trajectories we might take from here fail to save us, but there is one and we're looking for it, right? Those are two, you have to calculate those two things differently. But the other thing I'm getting from this, two of them, is you have to watch out for somebody who has 99 plus percent chance of doom, either of the versions I've just spelled out, either there's a 99% chance we are past the point of no return, or there's a 99% chance we will not succeed in escaping. Either of those is essentially, I mean, I know this well, because I'm a guy who, um, does very well in emergency circumstances, right? At the point at which you're 99% doomed, there are things that become very rational for you to attempt that you would never consider if you were only 90% doomed, right? That's exactly And so why do I not want to hand over control, analytical or otherwise, to anybody who's so certain in circumstances in which you really couldn't be so certain, Right. The uncertainties here are many. And, um, you know, just the simple idea that he's potentially doing the math wrong, which really looks to be the case. The more you scrutinize the analysis, the more it looks like it is, you know, I, I took him to task on uh, on Twitter and the podcast for treating a complex system as a complicated system. And if you do that, you get very funny things. Um, out of your analysis for things that will lead that will mislead you dramatically, and I'm reminded a little bit about um, you know about uh, Mandelbrot and the, the uh, it's not really the discovery of fractal math, but the innovation of of modern fractal geometry. Probably not to the degree of detail that you do. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> for, I'll, I'll 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 say it very simply. Right, there are some paradoxes that emerge if you look at things like. Um, how long is the coastline of this landmass? And it turns out that the finer a measuring device you use, the longer the coastline is. And an infinitely fine measuring device says that the coastline is infinitely long. 
um, irrespective of the size of the landmass, and that can't be right. They can't all have an infinitely long coastline. So you need something <clears throat> that deals with the fact that the finer you measure, the more convolutions there are, but that's not really adding to a, uh, a, a linear calculation. There's something about what is being calculated here where the number of tiny fractional possibilities that are being added up and coming to uh, effectively one is not how you would do this calculation, right? There are whole branches of the tree that are being excluded here because the one branch that's being calculated is being allowed to take up the entire possibility space. Uh, and all I would say is it doesn't have to be the exact description of how you're getting a weird number out of this, but that number that he's calculating in light of what we all know ought to tell you there's too much certainty here for the degree to which none of us know where we are, right? Yes. Um, I mean, here's here's how perhaps he gets there. And I'll, I'll put a little bit of a, a question mark, but that's how I understand it anyway. So that's where the Foomers come in. Um, so Foom is this idea, much like a fire that sort of just, you know, captures something and then kind of goes, boom. Um uh, that not only AI, uh, you know, self improvement is uh, possible. So you get an AGI that that can now program itself better than um, it, it, humans could, right? Hey, it's it's better at, at us at least that, right? So therefore, it can arbitrarily keep upgrading itself, and therefore um, it will become you know all powerful. But that that will happen very quickly, right? So it could be in in this in the scope of seconds or, or minutes or hours or even days or even a few weeks, but not years, um, and definitely not you know decades. Um, so that's the foom position, and from that position you can sort of see, especially if you're convinced that a you know um, a super intelligence. Um, will you know that is that is a singleton as they call it? Right? It is, is uncontested. Let's say it doesn't have a uh, something else that will stop it. Will just you know do away with us because hey why not or whatever. And again we, we can't really be that sure about that. But let's just say uh, that that is sensible, right? But you can sort of see how that all holds together. The problem is that the way we got into this uh, in reality is these large language models, which you know, do not appear to be agentic at all. They don't want anything, right? If they want anything at all, it is to compute the next token, as they call it. Find the next word in a in a, in a text. Uh, I'm using the word word with some liberties here, but for most people, that makes uh, that that's roughly accurate. Um, but uh, you know, that's and you can sort of see how that can be used because, well, hey, if you can do that, you can write code and et cetera, et cetera. But um, the, the, the important part is that, you know, when we've tried to turn them into agents, right? So we did this whole like um, auto GPT or the, somebody else made chaos GPT or whatever, baby AGI. There's a few projects on GitHub. Well, they, you know, besides the original like, hey, that's amazing or whatever, like they don't work that well, right? Like w once you chain enough like uncertain tasks on the back of the other, the uncertainty is dominated and the thing like crashes and burns and it doesn't crash and burn in like, a way that it like, I don't know, it takes over the world and kills us all. It just crashes and burns in like the way programs crash. And burn. Like it just doesn't do much. Maybe it spends 20 bucks off your credit card. Will that be sorted out? It totally could be. Like I'm not, I'm not here saying that this is not possible. What I'm saying is we still got room to go and humans are still in charge, mostly. Uh, and um, there, there, there is nuance in the path. The path matters, right? If it's a foom, well, then the path does not matter because um, here we are sitting one day, and the next day, the uh, <laughs> you know our new overlords announce their presence. But the way it is, the, the the sequence of operations matters. And if you hear a lot of Yukowski's arguments, there are well, if a super intelligence showed up, it could just you know yeah sure, but it's not gonna just appear right out of no we have some control authority here um to do stuff like figure out <laughs> how it works and um you know take various uh, adjustment courses um my and this is going to open up a whole other path but uh, my question is about symbiosis right is 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 the, the are the two even distinct is it even worth talking about agi versus human or should we be talking about human plus agi um, you know, there, yeah, there's so my, much uh, to talk about. That's my uh, third of five 
killer scenarios or deadly scenarios is malevolent use of AI. Um, so that is human plus uh, plus AI. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but it, well, but that's and that brings us back to the single point of failure thing, right? If we were uh, sane, we would be dismantling uh, all of these uh, sort of low hanging fruit, as they call it, like you know, easy ways to world dominance. Um, not because we are anarchists or you know into radical equity, but because well, those things are the levers you do not want. You know, the, the, they're the checkout guns that you do not want on the stage <laughs> you know, an all powerful, you know, cr br criminal breaks into your house, right? You don't want the gun just sitting there, hold it or throw it away. Do not just leave it next to the, <laughs> next to the fireplace from where, from where the, the thief is going to go. Right. Don't, don't, just don't do that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, um, that, that's sort of where I get into the whole, um, you know, the sequence operation matters, feedback matters. Um, I think that's my difference, actually, with most of the rationalists. Having run a company for 10 years, I understand the, the dynamic decision maker making and that planning tends to go awry. You don't want to over plan. You don't want to over specify. Um, you you want to be on your feet. You, uh, you know, in my, in my mind, Yukowski should be furiously experimenting right now with the latest technology to figure out what we can find out, not sort of making overconfident predictions. But again, I'm not... I'm not going to tell him what to do, right? Like anybody can do whatever they want. The, the degree to which I'm interested in all of that is a degree to which uh, there is panic spread and that panic will not be used by Yukowski, but it will be used by others who uh, see the ring of power and will move the appropriate, appropriate levers to shut the rest of us out. And that's really the, where, where, where the rubber yeah. hits the road. It's not, it's not about what Yudkowsky should or should not be doing. Everyone is free to you know, and he knows more than most. His perspective belongs uh, in in the discussion, right? Maybe he's right. On the other hand, it's a question about listening to him and acting on this suspect analysis, doing absolutely draconian things that you would never do if you weren't effectively uh, convinced that there was nothing to lose, which is where where he seems to have taken us.